company that I want to talk about today is Nanox Imaging. So I spent some time on reviewing their F1. So if you want to review, come on, cannot open this. If you want to review the F1, you could. It, this is an equivalent of uh, S1 document. If, you are, if uh, a company is a foreign company, then they have to file F1 instead of S1. So I spent some time on reviewing this. I found it really interesting. I think I chatted about it uh, in our Slack group also. In, in some of the previous uh, sessions, I briefly hinted that this is a stock I'm watching. But I never spent time in talking to you about my thesis. So this is where we're gonna spend time today, is talk about my thesis around Nanox. All right, so a quick updates, 8, 20, 25th of August, Nanox went IPO. I didn't know about Nanox then. It's only, I think, when they went IPO at 18, stock went up to, I think it jumped, it jumped up huge. 40, 50, 60? All the way to 66, okay. That's where people say, what is this? What's this Nanox? So then I, I did my initial study on 22nd. So let's talk about that. <clears throat> All right, what's the company mission? Our mission is to replace all legacy sources with our digital X-ray. We will dig deeper into what do they mean. World can be a better place if X-rays become more accessible to all population. Their whole idea is today, the way the X-rays are produced are super expensive, difficult to maintain, and that means the cost of doing an X-ray is beyond the reach of most of people in this world. So if we as a nano X can find out a way to replace the current sources of how the X-rays are generated, the whole process of X-ray to uh, diagnose the diseases could become much simpler. And then more and more people can avail the facility of X-ray because it is simpler, it is cheaper. If everyone have an ability to get an X-ray done, doctors will be able to diagnose many diseases much quicker. And that's their mission is to make sure they can replace all the legacy sources with a digital X-ray and make it much cheaper. So we'll dig deeper into, you know, what's the business scope, et cetera. So company was founded in 2012. It's an eight year old company by Ran Foley, Yakin and Hitoshi Masuya. Uh, well, I'll talk about these uh, founders, but it's a, almost an eight year old company. It's not just coming completely out of blue. It's been existing for some time and uh, uh, they have been doing some work in the back end. You can Review the company's presentation if you want to. But this is exactly what I have done. And I have kind of uh, created a summary which I'm gonna go through it. But th this also gives you good insight into what they are planning to do. Okay, so for example, two thirds of the world population has no access to medical imaging. And we are not talking about the developed world, it's talking about the whole world. Majority of the remaining one third, they have a wait time of weeks or months before they can get their X-ray done. It's too expensive 
and too complex for mass deployment. So anyway, let's let's continue our discussion on DynamX. What's the wrong What's wrong with current existing solutions? X-ray has been there for ages, but the method to produce X-ray has been the same for more than 120 years. The way X-ray get produced is, has not changed. It's the same method that we've been using for 120 years. The machines are bulky and expensive and is not affordable for poor countries. It's like Edison bulb versus LED bulb. Both gave light, but LED is much better way than the Edison ones. Right? So today, on average, the cost of X-ray scanner review by radiologist is three hundred dollars. Most of the world can't even afford it. It's too expensive. So the investment case for nano X is simple. We talked about a two third of the world is not even being scanned. Why? Because the cost of producing X-ray is huge. So let me go to their website. They had a cool video of uh, how the current X-rays is produced and what they are doing which will give you much better insight to you on how it happens. So I will give my commentary as you watch this. Okay. Okay, so this is how the X-ray machine looks like today. So, so let's look at how the X-rays are produced right now. So this is a huge vacuum tube. In this vacuum tube, you have a filament, which is heated to 2000 degree Fahrenheit. It generates a lot of electrons, which hits this anode plate. Now it generates tons of heat. So they have to rotate this anode to disperse the heat. So otherwise it will burn down the whole system. This is essentially how X-rays are produced for 100 years. Now, this is what Nanox has done. They have just changed the way X-rays are being produced. There is no heating filament. So they have a digital silicon chip where they have 100 million nanodes which are producing electron beam and they hit this anode at a different, different spot. So then, because they are hitting on all different spots, there is no heating element. You don't have to have any rotations. Then you use this in a tube and you generate a complete new source of X-ray and the size of the X-ray machine is reduced. The whole cooling system is no longer required. So that becomes much uh, easier and make it much cheaper. These nano X XM machines can be, I think I do have some data around, can be bought at way, way cheaper than what the traditional XM machines cost. So that's an interesting video wherein they actually showed how you can reduce the overall size. So we talked about it, uh, we saw the video. The ARC that their machine comes in a, that the weight of their machine, you know, the round thingy that we saw, that weighs only 70 kgs versus 2000 kgs for the average CT scanner. And the production cost is around $10,000 as compared to one to $3 million for a CT scanner. Huge, huge game changer. This is, a, you know, some of those technologies that could completely revolutionize the whole industry of X-ray. 
Log, we looked at it, the traditional systems work like this, Nano X, this whole round stuff is what produces their X-ray. So, so question from Dave, how were the level of radiation levels on human less or same as traditional? We'll see that. So they have done a comparison uh, of the X-rays produced and the X-ray film on how it appears. So Dave, we'll, we'll get to that. <clears throat> Not only they have this uh, X-ray machine, what they've also done is a, built a suit, a suit of cloud-based services based around charging for scans, right? which is their NanoX cloud. So it means once your scan is done, it's uploaded to NanoX cloud where they already have contracts with the radiologists who will review the scans and then give the analysis. So they have machines, they have NanoX cloud. So hardware is made in part partnership with manufacturers like Foxconn. We will talk about in detail about the other partners also. While the services are sold to doctors and other clinicians and researchers. Now using the combination of new tech, which is their ARC machine and the AI, before the radiologists look into it, they run these all scans through an AI. Nanox plan to reduce the cost of X-ray process from $300 to $40. That's mind blowing. That they could potentially reduce it to $40. And this is how the money will be distributed. $14 to NanoX, $16 to radiologist. Now again, the idea is great technology. What's the total addressable market? At the total addressable market, not including the support, maintenance, insurance, and ancillary services could reach around $21 billion by next year. So we don't want to look into the companies in which the technology is great, but the market is not there. So when you go to any VC, first thing they look at is what's the team? And the second thing they look at is, what's the market that you're trying to address? They don't even want to talk about your product. Before they talk about what your product is, they want to look at how big the market is that you're trying to address. Where are you trying to penetrate? If the market is not big enough, your product could be great. Sorry, not interested, not giving you money. So this one is a huge market the overall market of X-rays. Now let's look at companies moat. Great, market is good, but what could prevent others from copying you? So the, the moat that company has is a technological moat right now. They use a novel technology of chips. We saw that in a video that instead of heating the filament to 2000 degrees, they use chips. Now due to usage of chips, the heat generated is not huge. So there's no need, you know, the cooling, the big cooling systems are not required. So you can miniaturize the whole machine. That's the use of technology for this particular segment is what's new. The tech itself is not new. So NanoX uh, was founded in 2012. The work on the tech had been happening years before that. This technology was developed and perfected in Sony while they were working on a three-dimensional TV. Do you remember about 3D TV? I still recall, you know, maybe a decade or earlier, the 3D TV was rich. In some futuristic magazines, you could see that there will be a 3D TVs and then slowly those disappeared. Sony actually was working on these 3D TVs and the team of Sony was working on a way to produce X-rays without generating so much heat. So the tech was actually developed 
in Sony. But anyway, Sony shelved that project. So some engineers from Sony left and they formed Nanox. They said, now we know we can generate X-ray way cheaper with the smaller instruments. Can we find another use of that X-ray? How do we perfect that for medical application? So they created a company, Nanox, to find applications of the technology in medical field. And they acquired the know-how from Sony. They bought the rights of those technology from Sony. Sony was, I'm not doing anything in uh, 3D TV, that's fine. So now they have a patents granted in US, Israel and Japan and pending in the rest of the world. So NanoX company now owns the patent behind the whole process. Uh, that process is called cold cathode X-ray generation. Process is not new. It's not that they have created a new technology. They have perfected it for use in medical field. The tech was created by great engineers in Sony. Let me address some questions. Foxconn, the Taiwanese company that manufactures TV. Uh, yes, the same Foxconn. And then they have a partnership with others as well. Technology going to advance, but I'm sure the cost won't come down. Insurance company gonna ripping us off. Uh, yeah, uh, and again, I don't know about US, but I think their main focus is on the rest of the world where people can't even afford X-ray. In US, everything around the whole medical side is completely I want to use the word, but let's say completely tangled one. You don't understand how everything works out. Um, so, which is different than maybe from the rest of the world. Dave says, you remember seeing 3D TV in Best Buy? We don't see them anymore. Yes, so I do recall, uh, you know, a lot of discussions around 3D TV, uh, but this tech was developed for the TV. Now it is being repurposed for medical field. So I'm excited about this tech. Let's look at some few more things. How they will make money? The mass, massass, or medical service as a service. What they plan to do is give machines for free. So this will, my opinion, this will reduce the entry barrier, right? If I'm a hospital, again, I'm not talking about US-based hospitals. There are tons of money. Uh, but uh, hospitals, the rest of the world, why would I want to buy a $10,000 machine? It's a new and uh, the incumbents will always be there to offer them discounts and uh, uh, dissuade the hospitals from trying out something new. So what they're planning to do, Nanox, take the machine for free. We'll basically charge you for the screening, right? software as a service, that model works great. No initial capital investment. So no CapEx, everything become OpEx. Your CFO is also happy. We'll charge customer on per scan basis instead of charging upfront for the machine. So they have these arrangements with minimums built into the contracts. And if you go into their, to their website, you will actually see uh, some of the contracts that they have already forced with uh, many of the companies. Uh, let me just go there. Let's go to their news section. So they have an agreement with, let's say, uh, for the SPI Medical in Mexico to deploy 630 NanoX. They have agreement with uh, Golden Wine International for deployment of 500 nano systems in Taiwan and Singapore. They have agreement, $48 million agreement in Russian Belarus for Nanox ARC. They have agreement with ProMedica Bioelectronics for deployment of 500 nanox. So they have, a, they have uh, signed up agreements for them to deploy with some conditions that these need to be approved by regulators, right? So we'll talk about it. 
but they have a minimums built into these uh, agreements. So they are in in-house calculation is with the minimums in place. Even if you don't use the machine, you still pay those minimum charges. They'll still be able to earn $25,000 per annum per machine, if, just with the minimums. That's one way to plan to make money. Dave says, I see both a trader as an investor. So Dave, I am actually an investor. Now to invest into this, I will use option trades. So I, I don't pick up any ticker for trading um, out of blue. I want to know why I even I want to spend a time on that ticker and what's my stance on it. So I go through this process of if any new comes up of analyzing, now I am bullish on this. Now I will use auction trades to start putting my bullish on. So you got it right. So uh, that term does not exist, but I want to call myself as an option investor. I don't do in options because I want to get in and out of companies very soon. I have a long-term thesis for a company and then I use option trades to acquire it cheaper or to sell it at a higher or to reduce the cost basis. Uh, that's what I am. Liz question, Liz, I'll, uh, there, is an, there, there are images that they have shown. Let me see if there's on the website or maybe do I have that in the document? Uh, no, I don't have an uh, image in the document. So they have shown the comparison of uh, images. Uh, let's bring that up. of uh, how to find that out. But they did show the comparison of the traditional X-ray, you know, X-ray generated using the traditional methods. Oh, there it is. So a commercial X-ray system and X-ray generated through Nanox. So this is hand, this is uh, the feet, you know, a foot. So, and this is foot and ankle. So they do have all these uh, x-rays. Now this is left shoulder, etc. So you can look at more, it says now, are they any better? I think I can't talk about it. Only a radiologist can talk about it, but we will definitely look into what are they gonna do in next, I think it's next month they're gonna present it to a lot of radiologists. All right, coming back to how they plan to make money, medical as a service, or they can get a license fee. Uh, I actually listened through the whole, uh, there was a big, con you know, one hour conversation with the founder and the CEO of this company. And he was like, our focus is to make sure everyone in this world has access to X-ray we can't build it, we will open source our technology for others to build the system so that you know these systems can be built at scale, at a speed, and we can make this world a much better space. So this is where they come in that we will open source or we will license our technology to Fuji, GE, you know, we'll give them for free, play it. And if you want to use it, then you pay us a license fee. That's another source of revenue. And lastly is sale of machines where you cannot do as a service because of there are some countries where they have found that there are legal hurdles around medical as a service. So in those cases, we will sell the machine outright, you know, whatever that $10,000. So they, there are different ways in which they plan to make money. All right, margins, we talked about margins already. Cost is 10K and uh, you add additional cost of installing training, revenue is $14 per scan. And the end margins is around 60%. You know, you have to account for HIPAA, GDPR, cloud storage. And then it's a 60% margin, which is a good enough margin uh, for me uh, when I'm looking at a companies to create my own thesis. 
uh, are they top in this domain and who are the top three competitors? Uh, they don't have any competitors. Incumbents are the competitors. Uh, when I say incumbents means they the ones which have the legacy X-ray machines. There is no one else who is actually doing with the cold X-ray generation. Okay. Let's look at their partnerships. So they have a manufacturing partnerships with South SK, South Korea Telecom, which is the second biggest company in South Korea, right? So they have built a partnership with some of the big names. The Hynix, the division of South Korea uh, SK Telecom is the second biggest semiconductor manufacturer in the world. And that will be, Hynix will be the one which will be manufacturing the chips that we saw which, which generates the whole X uh, electron beam. Okay. The CEO or the chairman of Hynix is also on the board of directors of Nanox. Again, Nanox is perfecting for eight years, they worked out to, to find out and confirm that we can use this technology to generate X-rays that can be used for medis, uh, medical benefits, not for creating 3D TV. Now, they, of course, they don't have any manufacturing province. They're not a manufacturing company. Nanox is a tech company. So they now build up the partnerships with the manufacturers. Chips will be manufactured by Hynix, which is the second largest manufacturer in the world. Foxconn will manufacture units. And then they have uh, SK Telecom, they have a Fuji film, which will be uh, creating the mammography uh, equipment. Then they have a partnership for their AI stuff. Remember, all the scans get into the cloud. AI will uh, basically uh, take a first pass on that cloud to try to find out what's wrong, what can we infer from that X-ray. So there are partnerships with uh, companies that work in this field for cancer detection, for head and chest uh, X-ray, for mammography X-ray, cure metrics, for stroke, brain or mix. And then they have a partnership with, uh, you know, deployment partnerships. Some of them we already talked about. Oh, let me see. Okay, interesting, they're not using TSM. Yeah, uh, T I, I didn't see them using TSM. A uh, quick uh, look, I know this will be an eye chart. So the CEO is Ram, is Ran, and the other co-founder is Hitoshi. So Hitoshi was the person who was originally co-invested in the Nanox with Sony. So now he is leading the whole Japanese operation of NanoX and is also a member of board of NanoX. <clears throat> Other one I wanna talk about is Ram. We probably have not heard of this person before, but if we have been to Starbucks six months ago, not now, we have used its products. Any guesses? Is Hitoshi the founder of Bitcoin? Uh, I guess then he, he doesn't have to do. So that pseudonym was Satoshi. And his Hitoshi, maybe brother, lost brother of Satoshi is Hitoshi. All right, so coming back to the discussion, in Starbucks, we have seen uh, the products invented by Ron. And uh, this person has been a serial entrepreneur and has been working on bringing a lot of technology uh, commercializing a lot of technology, which uh, you know makes our life easier. In uh, he was earlier the CEO and a founder of a company called Power Mat, and those are the mats which, if you go to Starbucks or those cafes, just keep your mobile phone on that round circular mat, and it charges powerlessly. That's what Ron had done earlier in his previous role as a CEO of Power Mat. Is an ex-founder and CEO of PowerMax. So we are. So he's not, you know, someone coming just out of blue. He is been in this tech space for quite some time. And I also looked at some of his other projects. Now under the 
Nanox is one project, but he also has made his own personal investments into a lot of other projects. Most of them are again on some revolutionary technology, which if prove right, have a game changing uh, capabilities. Okay. Uh, like I said, founded by Japanese core team that worked for decades in this technology. So someone thinking about how an eight year old company can do something which let's say GE has not done it, something that a big Siemens has not done it. Uh, those are multi-billion dollar companies. How a small company can do it? My answer is, Nanox has not been working on this technology. It was Sony and the team at Sony that worked for decades on this technology. Nanox had just used it for and perfected it for medical usage. Okay. So what's there right now? Current one, they have a prototype is available. The machine is not yet uh, commercially being built. So the prototype is there. It is being used in a hospital in Israel. SK and Foxconn had asked for six weeks of lead time. You know, they need lead time to be able to start manufacturing it. And I believe that six weeks could become two months or three months. I don't care much. But once the regulatory approvals are done, that's where the manufacturing will start. Again, this is a pre-revenue company. They have nothing that they can sell today. The only thing they have is a prototype of a machine and the great tech. So if this sounds familiar with what we have seen a couple of months ago, pre-revenue Nikola, no product as such. Only thing they had was a technology and a prototype. And if you think that, hey, this could end up same as Nikola, I won't blame you. It could, I don't know. But I find this technology to be very promising. And if regulators don't approve it, then this company is not. I, so that's a huge risk. So we will talk about that, yeah, Nicola. So question, so Nanox licensed the technology from Sony? Yes, they bought this technology from Sony and now Nanox own the patent on this technology in US, Japan, and Israel. And they have a patent pending in the other countries, whatever the big countries they've applied to. But now they are the owner of this technology. So where they stand on a regulatory authorities, this is the most important. The whole investment thesis could go bust if this doesn't work out. They submitted 501k application. 501k application is an application which is not for anything new. Okay, so they got, they got a deficiency report from FDA and they have responded to FDA, but now the FDA have, have not, yeah, they have responded to FDA. Now FDA will be reviewing it. And of course they have a lot of other priorities. All the resources are FDA are now directed towards reviewing anything which is related to COVID and push back anything which is non-COVID. So it is, they are still waiting for FDA to come back. They're expecting that they may hear from FDA in first half of 2021. Europe, it's a bit slow. They're expecting that the approvals may come along in Q3 2021. And then they have also applied for approval from Mexico, Brazil, New Zealand, Australian regulatory bodies. So this is where they are in terms of the regulatory authorities approvals. This is the most, I, I cannot emphasize enough the importance of these regulatory authorities. And they have to wait until they get an approval to start manufacturing. Otherwise, this company is done with. How much they want to do? They want to do a first wave of deployment, 15,000 units by 2024. Today, they have a contractual agreements. Remember we talked about agreement with hospital A, B, C, D. 
they have a contractual agreement in place for 5,000 units. Means if the regulatory approvals are through, this deal is done deal. Those are legally committed deals for 5,000 units. Non-committed deals is with SK, they will apply 2,500 units. And USA RAD, which is USA Radiology, something like that, we can find it out, which is a distributor of X-ray machines in US. They have not committed, but agreed that if the approvals are done, they will buy 3,000 units. Again, I want to make it clear, this is not committed. 5,000 is already committed. Okay, financials. Uh, in my general review of a company, I look into financials, not as a CFA. I'm not a CFA or a CPA. I'm a tech guy, but I look into financials just to and, and F, see, you know, the health of balance sheet or cash flow or some of the things at a high level. We have, don't have to do it. It's a free revenue company. So very clearly, they don't make any money. What's the business risk? Business risk is a regulatory approval. Number two, I would say is a manufacturing, ramping of the manufacturing. Even though the Foxconn and SK have told they need six weeks of lead time. I don't know after COVID, how much of a capacity will they still have? You know, units at what level those units may be operating, what level of operating efficiencies those plants may be. So that could be risk. Third one, like Nicola, short sellers have called that this company is a fraud. It's a scam. So let's, uh, and I have, you know, I also looked into the short seller report. By the way, uh, why to ignore it? Right, so let's bring that up. From a Citron research, very well respected. I do get rid of this pop up. Hold on. Okay. For those, uh, I have respect for short sellers because they take a lot of risk when they're going short on any stock. So we just can't ignore it. And uh, like they've said, Nicola, yes, Nicola has a short seller report from uh, Muddy Waters or Citron. These are the two, no, Nicola had from Hindenburg Research. There are three, these three are, uh, at least two of them are very well known, uh, Muddy Waters and Citron. And uh, Hindenburg Research came into prominence because of their short seller thesis on Nikola. From an outset, this looks like to be a Nikola's cousin. Only technology, only prototype, agreements in place, zero financials, no revenue and a short seller report. So I look through the short seller report also. I have full respect for Citron, but again, they are not gods. Everyone make their own mistakes. Citron years earlier told that Shopify was a, a, a scam. Shopify numbers were all first. And at that point of a time, I had only put a small investment into Shopify thinking, oh, this will go down. Okay, and then the rest is the story. Uh, that's not to say that, you know, I will discard Citron because it, it kept me from investing in Shopify at $180. And uh, I had kept aside some money, but I saw Citron's uh, uh, short seller report. I'm like, I'm only putting 10, you know, only one fourth or maybe 10% of what I kept, let it fall down and then I'll buy it. And then I never bought it. Uh, anyway, uh, the whole idea is even short sellers can go wrong. There was a short seller report on Wayfair that the stock is worthless. We all know where Wayfair is. So do your own research. So I spent time on researching on, uh, uh, sorry, reviewing uh, Citron research report. And I think many of those uh, 
the claims that Citron has done probably don't have uh, much backing. So I'm not changing my thesis on it. And I think if I'm not wrong, Nanox doesn't have only Citron. Uh, probably Muddy Waters has also come up with a short seller report on it. Uh, but again, Muddy Waters also said that Jumia is a scam. Now they've turned it around and now they are putting the thesis that Jumia is a buy. So again, no one is got here. Short sellers do their own homework. They have their own thesis. Maybe they already made money. When Citron told that Nanox is a fraud, maybe at that was a time when Nanox fell from 66 all the way to 23, Citron made its money already. Hold on, let me go and see what's happening to my car outside. My apologies for this interruption. I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, my car looks okay. Oh, where was I? Uh, not. Okay, yeah, so I've, I've looked at uh, the research report and looked at the arguments that Citroen has put forth and uh, what I found in my own research and uh, listening to uh, the CEO presentation and what they presented in some of the conferences, I am still bullish on this one. But with the knowledge that it could go down to zero. Okay. Investors, we talked about, they have uh, uh, SK Telecom, Fujifilm, Foxconn, so they've got some big investors. Now, again, when I look at a company, we also want to look at what are the other optionality they have not for just the medical one, once if FDA approves the, their way of generating X-ray, that X-ray could have a lot of other uh, use cases. Right? For example, they can use it for, for breast cancer. X-rays depend on the density of the object being scanned so instead of uh, you know the, doing the scan for your skeletal for figuring out fracture, they could use it for detecting cancer. They could use X-ray for real-time video imaging, for airport security, for industrial uses, doing a non-destructive testing. So. The, the optionality comes from the fact that X-ray, wherever the X-ray are being used, this company has a role to play. Remember, they are not changing, they are not claiming that using X-ray, you can detect fracture or using X-ray, you can um, detect cancer or using X-ray, you can find out a crack in your machinery. They're not claiming any of those. Those claims are already done and approved. Those use cases exist. Only thing that they are doing, and that is why the filing that they're done with FDA is different from what pharma company do. All they are telling FDA is, we are generating an X-ray differently. Once the X-ray is generated, the rest of the process of how the X-ray is being used, what's the efficacy of using X-rays, all those are already approved. So that is why they had to do a different filing. They are not claiming that the X-ray is doing all these things. Those are already claims done and approved. All they are saying is 
we are generating x-ray in a different process. Once if the process of creating x-ray is approved, now they have a play in all the areas where the x-ray is being used today, right? So they have tons and tons of optionality. All right. Uh, talking about some of the questions, why Sony parted with it? And why not big companies is not in this one. So the, some of the companies have succeeded in some initiatives. Many companies are working on using carbon nanotubes in coal methods. So it's not that other companies were not working on it. There are some companies who were working on it. The coal, I mean, the coal methods means you don't have to generate so much amount of heat because that heat is the culprit that you have to have that big system. So Sony was working on field emission technology for display and they were able to generate the X-ray to hit the TV. And then the rest is the story. Sony shelved the project, engineers came out, created Nano X and then say, now we know how to generate X-ray without producing heat. Let's see if we can use it for other purposes. And so they spent eight years in perfecting it for medical space. So other question people ask is why they've gone IPO so early? Right, so the response, and this is, I just summarize the response from the CEO is, right now, they were able to generate a lot more interest in the market because of COVID-19, there was a lot of interest in the market and they were able to raise capital. And the dealing with the customers worldwide become much easier if you are a public listed company. Otherwise it's a some company from Israel. Now, if they say that they are listed in US exchanges, it gives them a lot more legitimacy. And this is a little more on a philanthropic side, saying we want to make sure that the shareholders can enjoy the growth of a company. And right? if you get into a company when the company is just starting, just kicking the tires, and then you have a you know time and ability to ride through the whole growth of the company. Unlike Many of the companies that are still staying private like Robin Hood and Airbnbs of the world that by the time they come out, we as a shareholder, we just don't have a chance to get into at those early prices, right? Uh, so a couple of questions. So they had a product, they have a prototype, they have agreements in place. So they decided let's go public. So that's the reason why they went public. There are more details around here, net summary. I'm very excited about it. It has the potential to change the world in order what they can do in the next year field. But if it doesn't get regulatory approvals, it'll become junk. So be cautious uh, on this one. It could, it's a one or zero uh, status company for me. It could become huge or it go to junk if uh, the approvals don't come through. Now the recent announcement why it picked up, you know, the stock picked up again was they are actually demonstrating, giving a demo of their machine um, on somewhere in, I think next month. They are doing live demonstration of ARC system at Radiology or Society of North America 2020. There's some conference coming up, RSNA 2020 conference. Of course, it will be virtual, uh, but they will be giving a demo of their system. And if this demo is successful, at least it will shut up uh, Citron and other short sellers who say they don't have any products uh, and they don't have any machine which is actually working. So we'll see how the prototype looks like, how the prototype works, when they're gonna do this demo. Rather than believing those YouTube videos where they have shown the machine working in a hospital in Israel, let's see this machine working in this conference. So uh, is the radiation dose the same? I think so, otherwise, you know, you won't even get those approvals. Though that will be the first thing that uh, FDA will look at is, 
is the amount of x-ray and the radiation levels coming out of that is same as for what's been coming out from the existing uh, x-ray machines this but i don't i have not found the numbers those i don't know what technical terms they measure it uh, i might try to find it uh, on those numbers so that's uh, my investment thesis and uh, risk uh, analysis on this company called nanox i am in it with the full knowledge that all my investment can go to zero so invest wisely think about the risk on it before you invest all right that's completes our deep dive into nanox any other question please note that all the information presented is purely for educational purposes and is not a financial or investment advice i don't know you you don't know me so do yourself a favor and don't invest or trade solely based on what you hear